Hello guys, my name is Balkrishnan Shivastav and welcome to Code with BK. So in this video, we write Java code solution for question 7 of IC 2024 computer science specimen paper which is this question. So before we begin, it is a request to please, 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 please subscribe to my channel because out of 100 viewers, only one or two are subscribed and a subscription is very important. So please, 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 please do subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. So this is the question that we have to solve. Take a minute and give this a reading. All right. So we have to create a class composite. These are the data members and these are the methods. In short, you have to have an array, 2D array of size M into N and you have to populate this array using composite numbers. For example, if M is 3 and N is 3, so M into N total number of elements are 9. So you have to fill this 2D array with the first 9 composite numbers. Okay. So I'm going to write a class composite okay the data members are a 2d integer array so private int arr okay making sure that i keep the name of the data member exactly the same then you have m n n private int m private int n okay so whenever you create classes for solutions in isc computer science papers make sure that you put all data members as private and all constructors and methods as public. Okay. Moving on, we have a constructor that takes two integers to initialize the size, size of the matrix. So public composite takes int mm, int nm. Okay. Again, you can choose to take these as m and n. Okay. But since the name of these arguments are mm and nn, so I'll keep it the same. Okay. So I'll say this dot m, or you can simply say m. Okay. Because we are using mm, so you can say m is mm n is nn and you also create the 2d array here okay mm or m and n okay so when you create this 2d array all the values in this 2d array are by default zero okay moving on to the next function we have int is composite int p to return one if the number is composite otherwise it turns zero okay so i say public int i'll keep the name of the function exactly the same okay and then int p okay Again, you can choose to rename this argument, but I'll keep it P because that's what given in the question. Okay. All right. So we know that numbers which are not prime are composite or in other words, composite numbers are numbers which are divisible by any other number apart from one and itself. Okay. And one is neither prime nor composite. So I return false for one. Now this check is redundant in the context of this question. And I will tell you why at the end of this code. Okay. Let me just complete it now. So if P is 1, 1 is neither prime nor composite, I return false. Okay. So I iterate from 2, okay, not 1, till less than P. Okay. And I check if any of these values I completely divide P. Okay. If that's the case, then this is a composite number. I return 1. Okay. Else finally I return 0. So this has to be returned 0 because we are returning 1 and 0. So basically 1 is neither prime nor nor composite okay so my is composite method is done as well okay moving on to void fill so public void fill okay now this method is responsible to fill the elements of the array with the first m into n composite numbers in column wise okay that is you should be filling the columns first so the first column should be filled then the second column then the third column and so on okay so I will take the starting composite number as 4 because 1 is neither prime nor composite. Integer 2 is prime, integer 3 is prime, integer 4 is the first composite number. Okay. Then I take int count equal to 0. Now why do I take count? Because count has to be less than m into n. Okay. That is I have to create m into n composite numbers and we have to increment count somewhere in the loop so that when count goes to m into n i stop the loop okay i take integer i to store the current row number integer j to store the current column number okay i'm starting with the top left location which is 0 comma 0 and i have to go column wise okay so if i have a composite number is composite cn equal to 1 okay i set ar of i comma j to cn composite number okay i do count plus plus because i have added one more composite number to my 2d array 
now since i have to go column wise i move to the next row okay because i have to fill the first column in the second column and so on i do i plus plus now if i have crossed the column that is i equal to m because the last row the bottom most location for any column is going to be row number m minus 1 if i have crossed that if i if i equal to m now then i have to move on to the next column so i say j plus plus and i set row number back to 0 because i start filling the column from the top again so you can say move to the next row move to the next column okay then start with first row of the next column okay and then you do cn plus plus because we are increasing the value of this variable one by one in each iteration but we are incrementing incrementing the counter only when this cn is a composite number that is why the stopping condition depends upon count and not on cn okay when my count goes m to m, m into n i have filled the entire 2d array and my loop should work okay so this is your fill function then finally display so public void display okay okay i iterate the array row wise m i plus plus for int j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus system dot out dot print f percent 4d and i have a r r of i comma j after i print each row i change the line okay when i'm using printf because it will print the rows the columns into a neatly formatted manner okay i don't have to worry about the spacing in that case okay and this is your display method all right then you also have to write a main in this case so i say public static void main string args okay i create an object of this composite i say composite composite equals new composite pass m into n okay suppose i pass say 3 into 4 okay i do composite dot fill okay and i do composite dot display okay this will create the object so it will create this 2d array okay that's why you have to create you have to initialize the array here because there is no separate function that does this job separately you have to create an array in this constructor okay his composite is just responsible to check if p is a composite number or not and fill is just uh, responsible to fill the array okay before the fill function is called you should be having your 2d array allocated okay let me compile okay compiles let me run question 7 okay so i should be getting a 2d array of 3 by 4 okay a matrix of 3 by 4 the first 12 composite numbers filled column wise okay so 4 comes then 6 then 8 so 3 rows 4 columns the first column then the second column 9 10 12 then 14 15 16 then 18 20 21 all right let me make it to say 5 comma 8 clear compile okay and this is your first 40 composite numbers let me make it a smaller one 3 into 2 compile run okay 4 6 8 9 10 12 so this code now completes your question okay there is one tiny thing here which is values possible for both m and n is 20 okay so i am not sure how you should validate this statement into your code do you have a check here check for valid m and n here i'm not sure so even if say m is greater than 20 or n is greater than 20 what are you supposed to do in this case okay something okay but the requirements of constructor is composite fill display and the main function are all done correctly okay so this check should really not be important it, it is redundant in this case okay all right so if you have any doubts in this video or if there is a part you did not understand please let me know in the comments i always try to answer all your queries in the comments and i will also add the link for the code of the solution in the description of this video you can check it out and i have solved and i will be solving all the other questions of ic 2024 computer science specimen paper as well the links to those videos will also be added in the description of this video you can check it out so please let me know your thoughts on this and you can always let me know if there's a question you want to solve or if there's a concept you want to discuss Thank you.